um, uh, thank you for your compelling testimony. In that testimony, you discuss how Facebook generates self-harm and, and self-hate, especially among vulnerable groups like teenage girls. I happen to be a father of four kids, um, three daughters, uh, two of whom are teenagers. And um, as, you, as you just alluded to, most adults, myself included, I've never been a teenager during the age of Facebook, Instagram, and, and these other social media platforms. And therefore, I think it can be really hard for many of us to fully appreciate the impact that certain posts may have, uh, in, including, I would add, uh, on a teen's mental health. So can you discuss the sh short and long-term consequences of body image issues on these platforms, please? The patterns that children establish in their teenage years live with them for the rest of their lives. The way they conceptualize who they are, how they conceptualize how they interact with other people are patterns and habits that they will take with them as they become adults, as they themselves raise children. I'm very scared about the upcoming generation because when you and I interact in person and I say something mean to you and I see you wince or I see you cry, that makes me less likely to do it the next time. Right, that's a feedback cycle. Online kids don't get those cues and they learn to be incredibly cruel to each other and they normalize it. And I'm scared of what will their lives look like where they grow up with the idea that it's okay to be treated badly by people who, who allegedly care about them. That's a scary future. Very scary future. And I see some evidence of, of that as to so many parents um, on a, on a regular basis. Are, are there other specific issues of significant consequence that the general public may not be fully aware of that are impacting um, vulnerable groups that you, you just like to elevate uh, during this um, testimony? One of the things that's hard, uh, for people who don't look at the data of social networks every day, it can be hard to conceptualize the distribution patterns of harms or just of usage that there are these things called power laws. It means that a small number of users are extremely intensely engaged on any given topic, and most people are just lightly engaged. When you look at things like misinformation, Facebook knows that the people who are exposed to the most misinformation are people who are recently widowed, divorced, moved to a new city, um, are isolated in some other way. Um, when I worked on civic misinformation, we discussed the idea of the misinformation burden like the idea that when people are exposed to ideas that are not true over and over again, it erodes their ability to, to connect with the community at large because they no longer adhere to facts that are consensus reality. Um, the fact that Facebook knows that its most vulnerable users, people who were recently widowed, like that they're isolated, that, that the systems that are meant to keep them safe, like demoting misinformation, stop working when people look at 2,000 posts a day, right? And I just, it, it breaks my heart, the idea that, that these rabbit holes would suck people down and then make it hard to connect with others. So Ms. Ms. Haujen, yeah. I desperately want to, uh, which is the American impulse, I wanna solve this problem. <laughs> and uh, I, do. Yeah. I very much uh, believe that uh, Congress not only has a role, but has a responsibility to uh, figure this out. I don't pretend to have all the answers. I would value your opinion, though, as to whether you believe that breaking up Facebook would solve any of the problems that you've discussed today. You think it would? So as an algorithmic specialist, so this is someone who designs algorithmic experiences, I'm actually against the breaking up of Facebook because even looking inside of just Facebook itself, so not even Facebook and Instagram, you see the problems of engagement-based ranking repeat themselves. So the problems here are about the design of algorithms of AI and the idea that AI is not intelligent. And if you break up Instagram and Facebook from each other, it's likely, so I used to work on Pinterest. And a thing that we faced from a business model perspective was that advertisers didn't wanna learn multiple advertising platforms. That they wanted to learn, they got one platform for Instagram and Facebook and whatever. And learning a second one for Pinterest 
Pinterest made radically fewer dollars per user. And what I'm scared of is right now, Facebook is the internet for lots of the world. If you go to Africa, the internet is Facebook. If you split Facebook and Instagram apart, it's likely that most advertising dollars will go to Instagram and Facebook will continue to be this Frankenstein that is altering, like that is endangering lives around the world, only now there won't be money to fund it. And so I think oversight and, regular, uh, re oversight and um, finding collaborative solutions with Congress is gonna be key because these systems are gonna continue to exist and be dangerous even if broken up. Thank you.